In this chapter, you will learn about the exciting field of haptics as we take a closer look to understand the haptic sense in relation to other senses, the definition and uses of haptic devices, and the application areas of haptics. Humans have five senses by which they perceive their environment. Which sense is the most important to you? How would you compare the sense of touch to the other senses? Generally, touch is so embedded in us that we don't even realize how essential it is for our daily life. However, the loss of the sense of touch is very disruptive. This video is from an experiment in 1988 at the University of Umea in Sweden, in which participants were asked to light a match. As you can see in the video, the participants could do the task quickly in normal conditions. In the second part of the experiment, the thumb, index, and middle finger of the participants were anesthetized. As you can see, when tactile information is blocked by anesthesia, the participant repeatedly drops the match. She is not sure if her fingers are in contact with the object, and she has a much less confident grip of it. Eventually, she can light the match by relying on her vision, but the same simple task becomes much more difficult without the sense of touch. Let's compare touch to vision and hearing that have been studied the most by researchers. Touch differs from vision and hearing by being distributed, multimodal, interactive, localized, and private, while vision and hearing are more centralized, distant, broad, and shared. Let's see what these mean. In contrast to vision and hearing that are located in the head, tactile sensitivity is distributed across the whole body. Our touch sensitivity changes and varies across the entirety of our bodies as well. The areas that are more commonly involved in haptic interaction have increased sensitivity with two of the most sensitive areas for touch being the hands and the mouth. The sense of touch is also distributed across two submodalities that complement each other in interesting ways. One submodality is called tactile or cutaneous and senses parameters such as contact, pressure, vibration, or temperature signals from the skin and a second submodality that's also called kinesthetic or proprioceptive, and lets our muscles sense the position and orientation of our body parts, as well as the force that's applied to it. What you feel by interacting with objects in the real world is often through both of these submodalities. The tactile signal is primarily conveyed by tactile receptors in the skin. These receptors have different shapes and properties and are embedded in the skin. The known types of receptors are Meissner corpuscles, Piscinian corpuscles, Ruffini's corpuscles, Merkel's discs, and free nerve endings. The combination of their activity mediates the different pathways through which tactile signals are processed and perceived. Scientific studies have discovered four types of tactile channels that are mainly classified by a receptive field and by their adaptation time. Adaptation time is the duration after which the receptor stops responding to the continuing stimulation. The type of receptor is determined by the size of its receptive field. Let's take a look at four types of receptors. Meissner corpuscles are called fast adapting type 1 or FA1 receptors. They have small receptive fields and are sensitive to low to medium frequencies. They mainly respond to fast force changes. Merkel's discs are slow adapting type 1 or SA1. They also have small receptive fields and are sensitive to much lower frequencies. They are mainly activated by haptic contact. Piscinian corpuscles are fast adapting type 2 or FA2 receptors. They have the largest receptive fields that enable them to sense more remote events on the body. They have a large bandwidth of 50 to 500 Hz and they can sense local and distant vibrations. Ruffini's corpuscles are called slow adapting type 2 or SA2. They have a rather large receptive field and respond to touch-induced skin stretches with low frequency. Proprioceptive or kinesthetic touch is mainly mediated by receptors embedded in the muscles and joints, specifically the muscle spindles and the Golgi organs. Muscle spindles typically sense changes in muscle length. There are 4,000 of them in each arm contributing to mapping the changes in the positioning of our limbs. Golgi tendon organs encode forces that are induced by muscular contraction. These receptors are more specific than cutaneous receptors and mainly contribute to proprioception when there is no haptic contact. Another interesting aspect of our sense of touch is that the information gathered directly depends on the gestures you use to interact with the environment. 
In 1990, Klatsky and colleagues coined the term exploratory procedures to describe hand gestures that people unconsciously use to learn about object properties. To give a few examples, there is lateral motion, which is used to discover material texture. When pressure is applied, we can discover the hardness of a material. When we follow the contours of an object, we can understand its shape, and when we completely enclose our hand on an object, the global shape along with the volume is understood. There are other procedures, such as static contact and unsupported holding. In general, humans are experts at choosing the right gesture for the right task. Touch is known to be the first sense that is developed as a fetus. As such, it is personal and strongly relates to emotions and comfort. At the same time, touch sensations are often hard to share, in contrast to vision and hearing that are experienced simultaneously by everyone in a vicinity. Haptics is the science and technology of touch. Haptic scientists, engineers, and designers, or hapticians for short, try to recreate the sense of touch through haptic interfaces. A haptic interface senses a physical quantity from the user, physically acts on the user via an actuator, and connects the sensing to acting with fast processing. The uses of these interfaces are numerous. For example, they can help with augmenting the human capability to interact with the real world. In extreme cases, this involves replacement of a lost limb. As you can see in this video, the participant is using a haptic interface to replace a lost arm and hand, which allows them to pick up objects. objects. Or they might augment our capability to perform a difficult task. For example, this video presents a device that helps the user draw more accurately. Haptic interfaces are also ideal to interact remotely with dangerous and complex environments, that can include space maintenance, surgery, or the cleanup of a contaminated area. In these interfaces, haptic feedback enables the operator to perform more complex tasks with more accuracy and reduces the risk of accidental damage as shown in this demo of teleoperated robotic surgery. Here, the surgeon can feel the amount of vibration that they are generating when they are manipulating pegs in a teleoperated training task with a surgical robot. The left and right vibration lines visually depict the amount and frequency of the vibrations that the surgeon generates when controlling the remote surgical tools. These vibrations are played back to the surgeon through a vibration actuator and help the surgeon to feel the contact of the remote tools. In another example that features a biomanipulation task, the user receives haptic feedback while they manipulate a micro-robot that moves within a blood sample. The robot's subtle interactions with the medium and the surrounding blood cells are conveyed to the operator in real time by a three-dimensional force feedback to enhance the accuracy of the manipulation. Haptic interfaces are also typically used to make virtual content more immersive through sensory feedback as in this example of touching the buttons on the screen or by rendering the shapes in virtual reality. These capabilities make haptic interfaces suitable for a large number of important applications such as surgery, robot teleoperation, rehabilitation, the study of human perception, VR and AR applications in general, as well as the entertainment industry, education, and communicating emotion. Different haptic interfaces are typically designed and created through a process that starts with understanding tactile perception and the qualities that the haptic feedback needs to achieve. In a second phase, a hardware setup that is capable of rendering the haptic sensation is selected or designed. Finally, the haptic device is integrated within the intended user applications. Understanding the key aspects of this process will be a major learning objective of this course. This chapter introduced key concepts of haptics and haptic interfaces. As a first assignment, watch this video of a haptic interaction and try to answer the following questions. Then, try to find another example of a haptic device from the literature and describe the same points for it.